I got a question for you. Why do the federal conservatives give taxpayers' dollars to the left-wing anti-oil sands lobby groups? You heard me right. I'm not talking about Calgary's left-wing mayor now. I'm not talking about Alberta's left-wing conservative and name-only government. I'm talking about the federal government. You know, Stephen Harper, Joe Oliver. Why are they giving money, for example, to the Pembina Institute? Uh, this week I've shown you how other people have been funding the propaganda war against the oil sands. Just a quick recap. The city of Calgary gave $340,000 to an anti-oil sands extremist group, this Pembina Institute that I mentioned. That money helped to cover the payroll for 22 different anti-oil sands activists at Pembina, including three registered lobbyists. And in return for all those tax dollars, Pembina gave the city of Calgary this. Huh, a 35-page propaganda document recommending that Calgary drivers be subject to a carbon tax and that the city should introduce carbon offsets for other day-to-day -day activities, too. It was basically a dumbed-down version of Stefan Dion's green shift, except for that Stefan Dion didn't pay 340000 bucks for it. Now, Calgary's mayor, Nahid Nenshi, is a lifelong liberal. His chief of staff, Chima Nikendram, well, he's Justin Trudeau's campaign boss for Calgary. So maybe you might expect them to love this Calgary green shift. I mean, they're liberals. Okay, fine. So what's the province of Alberta's excuse? They've been run by a purportedly conservative government since 1971. As I showed you yesterday, they have shoveled, or two days ago, they shoveled hundreds of thousands of dollars to Pembina also from various departments, Alberta Environment, Alberta Energy. They just all love giving money to a lobby group whose central mission is to rid the world of oil and gas. They're against fossil fuels. Pembina's reports are not scientific. They're not real research. They're politics. They're propaganda. So these contracts are really just donations. It doesn't take $340,000 to produce a 35-page political pamphlet. That's really just a donation. The government of Alberta has thousands of bureaucrats, including some real scientists, some real neutral experts. There are great universities in Alberta, not just the big ones in Calgary and Edmonton, but other ones, including real oil and gas and environmental experts. Why on earth would the province of Alberta deliberately choose non-experts from Pembina, registered anti-oil sands lobbyists, to do any government work at all? Even worse, I showed you how oil companies themselves now pay the Dane Geld to Pembina. Here's the promotional website for Pembina's fundraising dinner. Look at those oil companies, Shell, Suncor. Do you know what the word Dane Geld means? It's when the Vikings used to raid villages. After a while, they'd come to the village again and say, look, we're going to sack your town, kill you, steal your stuff, just like last year. Or you could just pay us a huge bribe and we'll spare you the pain and you'll save us the trouble. That was called paying the Dane Geld. Dane is in the Danish invaders. Geld is in gold. But as Rudyard Kipling explained, once you pay the Dane Geld, you never get rid of the Dane. The oil companies are paying their enemies who naturally learn that there is a good profit to being an enemy of oil and continue to be an enemy year after year to great profit. That's what puzzles me so much about Preston Manning's love affair with the Pembina Institute. He's not an oil company. They can't shake him down for big contracts. They can't threaten him with regulatory lawsuits or bad propaganda or whatever. He has positively chosen to embrace green conservatism, which, if you listen to him, is a lot of green, but really no conservatism. Tends that there's more effective ways of tackling environmental problems, including global warming, proliferation of plastics, urban sprawl, biodiversity, than by unilateral treaties, top-down regulations, and other approaches offered by big governments and their allies. Sorry, Preston, you spoke truth to power against the Kyoto Protocol back in Parliament in 1997. I was there with you. I, I simply don't buy that you now believe in the theory of man-made global warming today. There's nothing conservative about banning plastic either. That's just kooky. Just because a conservative says hard left slogans doesn't make you a green conservative. It makes you a conservative in name only. They will never love you until you abandon everything conservative you stand for. I mentioned that the real puppet masters here, though, are the foreign funders. Like the Rockefeller Brothers Fund out of New York that pays the Pembina Institute and other Canadian lobby firms to be their local face for their massive multi-million dollar anti-oil sands propaganda campaign. I'm not sure why Nahid Nenshi and Alison Redford and the oil companies and Preston Manning are fine with massive foreign intervention in the Canadian debate. I mean, just for comparison, what would be the Canadian reaction if, say, just a brainstorm, what if the NRA, the National Rifle Association, that big U.S. gun lobby, was spending millions of dollars a year trying to influence Canadian gun control policy? Well, no need to guess. Watch this red alert broadcast from the CBC's National News.
The NRA bills itself as the most powerful lobby group in the world, and it's been helping opponents of the registry here for at least 10 years. If you think it only involves Canadians, you would be wrong. A powerful American lobby group has found its way into this. And we've learned the NRA isn't just watching the Canadian debate, it's been actively involved in trying to influence the outcome. I got elected in 1999, and I became aware soon after of the NRA's involvement uh, in the debate. There's no question the NRA has been closely following this latest political jockeying. But the polarizing anti-gun control rhetoric, for which it's known, appears to be backfiring here. I think for a lot of people in Canada, if they knew that the NRA was part of the effort to get rid of the gun registry, they would think more about their views. The real question for Canadians is, are they comfortable with an American lobby group having a role in what's become a very polarized Canadian debate? And well, You have to pay extremely close attention to the words used in that breathless story because they actually did not provide any evidence. I watched the whole thing, that the NRA had spent a single cent in Canada to campaign, not a cent, no help, no campaigning, no fundraising, no lobbying, nothing. They were just following the debate, as in reading newspapers or whatever. But that was a five-alarm fire at the CBC. Foreign meddling in our laws. But here, we have an explicit foreign-funded environmentalist attack on our key industry and crickets. The CBC has never, not once, done a story on this foreign funding of environmental groups by massive foundations. You'd think they'd be interested in the story I showed you yesterday about the UK High Commission spending $60,000 to give the Pembina Institute to have them influence Calgary's carbon tax views to better conform with the UK government's objectives. As in, while the city of Calgary was paying the Pembina Institute to write a carbon plan for the city, Pembina was also secretly taking money on the side from the UK government with the specific instructions to alter and influence Calgary's policy to promote higher taxes. Now, I don't know why the Brits would do that, but I could guess. I mean, they sell oil too from the North Sea. It helps them to make life tougher for their Canadian competitors, the oil sands. They have industry in the UK that's heavily taxed. It's at a disadvantage. So if they can raise Canadian taxes, like with a carbon tax, that gives their UK companies a leg up. So we have secret meddling by the UK High Commission with the very lobbyists that Calgary paid to write a report. That's a scandal. It's a scandal that the media party isn't covering either. But they're in the tank with these anti-oil sands activists. But it's also a scandal of Pembina filing false reports. Here, let me show you what I mean. Here is Pembina's official registration with the lobbying registry. But look, it says right there, Pembina receives no government funding. But we know it does from pretty much every level of government imaginable, including foreign governments. So why did Pembina lie on its filings? What else do they lie about? What other embassies do they take money from? Other competitors like, I don't know, other oil producing countries like Norway? Other countries with high energy costs like Japan, who would like a tax advantage by foisting a carbon tax on us? Or how about less friendly countries like OPEC dictatorships? I put these questions to the boss of Pembina. It won't surprise you to know that he did not answer me. But fine. How about the people who have said repeatedly that Canada's economic prosperity depends on oil? and getting that oil to market. How about the people who say that job creation is their top priority, who keep running those economic action plan ads? How about Stephen J. Harper, Canada's conservative prime minister from Calgary itself? Where's he? I'll tell you where he is. He presides over a government that funds the Pembina Institute too, big time. The federal government's environment department gives contracts to Pembina. Again, Pembina aren't scientists, they're registered lobbyists, they're advocates. Why is the Environment Department funding its own critics? Natural Resources Canada, that's Joe Oliver's shop. He's one of Canada's best advocates for oil and gas. He was just in Washington again, promoting the Keystone XL pipeline. But the Pembina Institute's key strategic goal is to stop the Keystone XL pipeline. That's part of their contract with the Rockefeller Brothers Fund. So why is Joe Oliver funding opponents of the Keystone XL pipeline, as in the lobbyists, the propagandists, the activists, the Pembina. Why on earth is Indian Affairs giving them contracts too? Why on earth is Stephen Harper's Agriculture Department giving them contracts too? These are not scientists, and if they were, they'd be terribly biased. They literally have registered themselves in Ottawa as biased partisan lobbyists promoting an anti-oil sense campaign. 
why would the conservative government give them money? I mean, why not just cut a check to Thomas Mulcair to write another report about Dutch disease, if that's what you're doing? This is nothing less than the environmentalist equivalent of the court challenges program. Remember that? That was when former governments literally paid lawyers to sue the government. Seriously, they paid to be sued. They paid radical groups to push causes and claims that no normal Canadian would support, either financially or democratically in elections. Well, same thing here. Stephen Harper is the oil sands leading advocate in Canada, but he is also a leading paymaster to foreign directed lobbyists like Pembina. Does he even know that Pembina is taking instructions from foreign embassies? Look, who will be the grown-up here? Who's going to solve this? This isn't just debating society fun stuff. It's not just about making the nightly news stuff. This is about thousands of real jobs <clears throat> and billions of dollars in economic growth and tax revenues. This is about keeping Canada out of a recession again. Who's going to be the grown-up here? <laughs> Need Nancy, the celebrity mayor who thinks the proper response to my legitimate questions about this is to ask if I've stopped beating my wife? No, he's more interested in doing his self-promotion tours to Toronto to prepare his larger political ambitions. He loves the Pembina Institute. Remember this? Thank you for being there today, <laughs> and thank you for supporting Pembina. Canada's most important, if you don't mind me saying so, clean energy, think and do tank. Pembina does great work. And we are proud that Pembina was born and raised right here in Alberta because we take environmental sustainability seriously. We believe in long-term clean energy usage and we believe in environmentally sustainable economic growth. Yeah, that's code for phasing out oil. Nahid Nancy's on the other side. Alison Redford? Well, not likely. Her first big speech about energy after she became Alberta Premier was to fly to Toronto to talk about wind turbines. Okay, well then who? What will John Baird, the Conservative Foreign Minister, do to stop the UK Foreign Office and other embassies from undermining the democratic sovereignty of our Canadian government by secretly paying consultants to follow foreign objectives rather than Canadian goals? What about Carrie Lynn Finlay, the new Revenue Minister? How does she feel about the Pembina Institute and other Canadian lobby groups laundering money through a charitable number that's supposed to be reserved for genuine charities like hospitals and schools? In the 2012 budget, her department was given an extra $8 million over two years to crack down on charities fraud, especially by charities being illegally political. Well, it's been 18 months, and not one single environmental lobby group has had their status stripped away. Why are they allowed to break the law this way? Where is Stephen Harper's lobbyist commissioner? I showed you Pembina's filings. They lied. They lied about the government funding. Of course they lied. Would you want to disclose that you were on a foreign payroll? let alone paid by the very politicians in Canada, you're lobbying? Where's Joe Oliver? Why is the National Energy Board still spending millions of dollars paying lawyers, activists, and propagandists to oppose energy and pipeline projects? You heard me right. The National Energy Board literally gives cash to these very groups to fight against them. It's Oliver's own court challenges program. But most of all, where is Stephen Harper? He is the grown-up. He's not a celebrity mayor like Nenshi. He's not a fake conservative like Redford. He's not a co-opted conservative like Manning. Not a green male shakedown victim like the oil companies. Stephen Harper is the last best hope to take on these extremist groups. Not to ban them. That's what they do in OPEC countries. We don't ban people in Canada. But can we please stop giving them taxpayers' cash? Stop giving them contracts from taxpayers' money? Stop giving them free charitable status when they're nothing but political activists? And it's not just the money. It's the moral acceptance of these destroyers, these industrial saboteurs, these underminers. Where's our national self-respect? Why do we allow agents of other embassies and countries to attack us without a peep from us? I have come to the belief that only Stephen Harper can do something about this. Only Stephen Harper can show the leadership to defund and denormalize these groups. It should be perfectly legal to campaign against your own country to take foreign instructions to hate Canada and attack our jobs. It should be legal. But Stephen Harper must make it clear that Canadians will never pay for that, will never call that charity, and we sure as hell won't hire such turncoats with our tax dollars either.